The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are three different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I will respond as soon as I can. All right, so here's some information for you. Today, we're gonna to wrap up this review for the final exam. Your final exam can be taken any time from now up until it needs to be finished by Monday night at 11.59 p.m., okay? Once uh, the finals are done, so come Tuesday morning, I will start calculating people's grades. Once I have calculated your individual grade in the class, I will send that to you in an email, okay? So I will email everybody what their final grades are in the class. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, so like I said, after today, this meeting and then my office hour from 1.15 to 2.15 will be the last official time we'll meet. Uh, Monday, there won't be any class meetings or the rest of the next week for that matter either. You'll just take your final exam. I'm on jury duty next week, so I probably won't even be available even if you try to contact me. But there shouldn't be any need. Uh, so there you go. And we're gonna go ahead now and pick up from where we left off yesterday with reviewing. And we were in section 10.3. We'd gone through looking at the quadratic formula. We're gonna look at some application problems and then we'll move on and wrap up chapter 10 and go on to chapter 11. So the first question I wanna look at in section 10.3, it says a right triangle. Okay, so we've got this right triangle. And it says the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 2.5 units long. So the hypotenuse is always the, wrong, the, the long side of a triangle. And it's also C in the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, the longer leg is 1.7 units longer than the shorter leg. So if we call the shorter leg X, the longer leg would be X plus 1.7 units. Now, whereas the hypotenuse or the long side always has to be C, the two other sides called the legs, either one of them can be A and the other one is B. So I'm gonna call this A and this B, all right? So using that information, we have X, squared plus x plus 1.7 squared equals 2.5 squared. Any questions so far on how I got that? Okay, x squared is just that, it's x squared. x plus 1.7 squared would be x plus 1.7 times x plus 1.7 and let's see, 2.5 times 2.5 should be 6.25. So now we have to foil together those two binomials in the middle. So we've got x squared plus x squared plus 1.7x plus 1.7x plus, let's see, 1.7 times 1.7 is 2.89. And that all equals 6.25. Combining like terms, we have 2x squared plus, let's see, 1.7 plus 1.7 would be 3.4x plus 2.89 equals 6.25. So now we'll subtract 6.25 from both sides of the equation, and we get 2x squared plus 3.4x, and then let's see here, 2.89 minus 6.25 is minus 3.36 equals zero. All right, let's see. Now I'm gonna be putting that into the quadratic formula, but I'm gonna get rid of my decimals first. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by 100, which gives me 200x squared plus 340x minus 336 equals zero. 
but I could also reduce that down and I'm gonna divide everybody by, I believe four. So let's take this and this and this. We get 50X squared plus, let's see, 340 divided by four is 85X minus 336 divided by four, 84 equals zero. So now I'm ready to use that equation and plug it into the quadratic formula. So let me recopy that on the next page. 50x squared plus 85x minus 84 equals zero. I'm actually gonna go back and just really quickly check my work because I kind of went through this fast. And let's see here, times 100. That looks good, that looks good. Divided by four. That looks good. I think we're okay. All right. So A is 50, B is 85, and C is negative 84. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. Continuing to simplify, x equals negative 85 plus or minus the square root of, let's see here, 85 times 85 is 7,225. And then we've got minus 4 times positive 50 times minus 84. So that's going to be a plus 4 times 50 times 84 is 16,800. That's all over 100. Continuing to simplify, x equals negative 85 plus or minus, let's see, 16,800 plus 7,225 is 24025, all of that over 100. So then we get x equals negative 85 plus or minus, let's see, 24,025. The square root of that is 155. That worked out nicely, over 100. So now my two possible solutions are x equals negative 85 plus 155 over 100, or x equals negative 85 minus 155 over 100. Well, simplifying further on top, negative 85 plus 155 would be what, 70? And 70 over 100 would be 7 tenths. So 0.7, and that's units. Negative 85 minus 155, let's see here, that would be negative 240 over 100, which would be negative 2.4 units. But since we're dealing with distances, we can't have a negative answer. So x equals 0.7 units. x plus 1.7 would be 2.4 units. So it said, um, find the lengths of the legs. So 0.7 units and 2.4 units. Any questions on that particular problem? All right, go on and take a look at another one. This one says, the world's largest LED screen. So this is a huge television screen. It's suspended in the center, it's the centerpiece of the place, a popular mall in Beijing, China. Find the length and width of the rectangular screen. So we're dealing with a rectangular screen. If the length is 10 meters more than eight times the width. So let's call this the length and this the width. If the width is X, the length is eight, it's 10 meters more than eight times the width. So eight X plus 10. 10 meters more than eight times the width. 
okay? And they tell us that the area is 7,500 square meters. Using the formula, area equals length times width, we get the following equation. 7,500 equals 8x plus 10 times x. So now, simplifying this equation, 7,500 equals 8x squared plus 10x. I'm going to subtract 7,500 from both sides of the equation. So we get zero equals 8x squared plus 10x minus 7,500. Uh, all of my coefficients are even, so I could divide through by two. Zero equals 4x squared plus 5x minus, let's see, 7,500 divided by two should be about 37.50, okay? So there is my formula. I'm gonna carry that on to the next page just in case I need more room than I have left here. So we've got zero equals four X squared plus five X minus 3,750. Once again, I'm gonna take a quick check, make sure I did all my calculations correctly. Uh, I believe so. Okay, so A is four, B is five, and C is negative 3750. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four A C all over two A. Continuing to simplify, x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of 25. And then I've got a negative times a positive times a negative. So that's gonna be plus. And let's see here, we've got four times four times 3750, which is 60,000 all over eight x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of 60,025 all over eight. And let's see if 60,025 is a square, it is. x equals negative five plus or minus 245 all over eight. So two possibilities, x equals negative five plus 245 over eight, x equals negative five minus 245 over eight. Coming back up here, negative five plus 245 is 240 over eight would be 30, and that's meters. Negative five minus 245 would be negative 250 over eight. Well, that's negative and it's a distance, so I don't even need to take it any further. So x is 30 meters. We come back here, this would be 30 meters. Eight times 30 is 240 plus 10 is 250 meters. So the length is 250 meters, the width is 30 meters. Any questions about that? Okay, let's see here. We're gonna go on to section 10.4 and Let's see, yeah. So we need to go to our graphing screen. And I just want to go through and, uh, that'll work, red, sure. Let's change that to black because I think black shows up better. And we've got that, and that, that. Okay, so we looked at two different forms of a second degree or quadratic equation. The first form we looked at was in the form of y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus 
k. When a problem is in this form, the following situation is true. If a is greater than zero, the parabola opens up. If a is less than zero, the parabola opens downward. The axis of symmetry is at x equals h. Now, I mentioned this before, but I still had people that did this wrong on their chapter uh, 10 test. When it asks for the axis of symmetry, you can't just put a number. You've got to put x equals whatever number it is because it's actually a, a, a vertical line, OK? So the axis of symmetry is at x equals h. The vertex is at h, k. All right. So let's say we have the equation y equals, or let's even, let's make it a function. So uh, so let's see, we've got f of x equals 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 4. Okay. So what do I know? I know that the parabola opens upward because of the two. I know the axis of symmetry is at x equals h, which is three. So that means that on the graph, there's a dotted line. It's not actually part of the graph, but it's there to help us with graphing. It's almost on three. Sorry, I got a little bit off there. The vertex is at three, negative four. So three, negative four. Okay. Now, if we were doing this by hand, which I am, I would make a table. And I would, let's see here. I would put the vertex Here, and then I might do what, four, five, six, two, one, and I'd find some additional points, okay? If x is one, one minus three is negative two, negative two squared is four, four times two is eight, eight minus four is four. If x is two, two minus three is negative one, negative one squared is one, one times two is two, two minus four is negative two. If x is four, four minus three is one, one squared is one, one times two is two, two minus four is negative two, and then what, this should be four, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so then I would go through and I would plot one, four, let's see, two, negative two, four, negative two, five, four, okay, and then I have this graph. Oops. Now, that's if you were graphing it freehand and they're in a normal situation. Using WebAssign, what you need to do you, to graph it, you need to find the vertex first and foremost, and then you need one other point, not the vertex, that is on the graph. So for instance, I could use two, negative two, okay? Now, what you would do on WebAssign, let's see here. Uh, I know this is sad looking, but it is what it is. A little repair job there. So, over on the left side of the screen in WebAssign, there's a bunch of buttons. You want to click on the button that has the parabola, and you want to click on it until it turns solid blue. Okay. Then you go to the graphing screen, and you're going to plot the vertex, uh, 3, negative 4, which you know, we'll just, I don't have a scale on here or anything, but so you're going to plot that vertex, okay, first. And then you're going to plot one other point. So let's say 2, negative 2 is uh, uh, over here or whatever. Okay. 
once you plot that second point, the graph should show up, okay? And then if you just click out, out here, uh, I think it turns it uh, black instead of uh, blue or whatever it is. Okay, now, if one of your points is a tricky point, it's not a nice number, like maybe it's 2 17ths or something like that, go ahead and plot your vertex and then your second point. And after you've, after you've done that over here on the right side, it's gonna, uh, if you click, I think it'll say like parabola one or something, and you click on that and it's gonna give you point one and point two ordered pairs. You can go in there and put in the correct values, okay? So I think some of you never figured that out last uh, during this first test and never came and watched the video to find out how to do it anyway. Any questions about that? Okay, let's take a look at another uh, situation. Let's take a look at the second form of a parabola. That's of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? In this form, the if a is greater than zero, the parabola opens upward. If a is less than zero, the parabola opens downward. If you have the same equation, but in the two different forms, the value of a is gonna be the same in either, either form, okay. The axis of symmetry is at x equals negative b over 2a. And the vertex is at the ordered pair, negative b over 2a. So whatever the x, whatever the axis of symmetry x value is. And then f of negative b over 2a, meaning you put the x value into the function and calculate the y value, all right? Let's say we've got the following equation. Um, F of x equals x squared plus four x uh, plus four, okay? So we know that a is one, okay? There's an implied one there. So the parabola is gonna open upward a is one, B is four, and C is four. So X equals negative B over two A would be negative four over two times one, which is negative two. So again, if we were graphing this by hand, not on the computer, we'd have an axis of symmetry going through X equals negative two, okay? Now, to find the vertex, we need to find f of negative two, which is negative two, the quantity squared, plus four times negative two plus four, which is four minus eight plus four, which is zero. So the vertex is at negative two, zero, okay? All right, so, now, again, uh, if we were doing this by hand, which I'm doing, I'd make a table. I'd put the vertex in there. I'd maybe use negative three, negative four, negative one, zero, and I'd complete those ordered pairs and draw the graph. In WebAssign, all I need to do, same thing in this form, I need to find the vertex. And one other point, let's see, if we put negative one in there, f of negative one would be negative one, the quantity squared, plus four times negative one plus four, which I believe is one. So negative one, one is right there, okay? And once you put the vertex in first, then the second point, doing everything I explained in the previous problem, and there will be your graph. Now, there are other things that they may ask you for. They may ask you to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So let's go back 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to erase some of this information so that I can leave it on the same page. And again, if you didn't get it all copied down, you can always look at it on the video. To find x-intercepts, you set y equal to zero. Well, if y is zero, you would have the following equation, okay? And we now have a, b, and c. We can use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. x is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 16 over 2. x is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2. x is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 is 0 over 2. So basically we get x is negative 2. And there's only one x-intercept. Why is that? Well, because that also happens to be the vertex of the parabola, okay? How do you find the y-intercept? You'd set x equal to zero. Well, if x is zero, we get zero plus four times zero plus four is four. So zero, four would be the y-intercept. And let's see, negative two, zero was the x-intercept. So zero, four is here, okay? And if I wanted to graph that by hand, I could use the axis of symmetry and reflect it through there. And there's my graph. But again, on WebAssign, you're only going to need to find the vertex, which was, where was the vertex? <laughs> oh, it's right here. I erased it. That's why I can't find it. Duh. Anyway. You find the vertex plot at one other point and plot it, but it may also ask you not necessarily to plot them, but what are the x and y intercepts? Okay. I'm going to go on and look at a couple more story problems. Get this to shut down. Here we go. Okay. And. Here. All right, so this is still in section 10.4. Can you see the screen I'm writing on here? Hello? Can you see the screen, the white screen that I'm writing on? Yes. Okay, just whenever I switch back and forth, I just want to make sure sometimes I forget to push the right buttons. Okay. Um, Here's an example, it says fireworks. A fireworks shell is shot straight up with an initial velocity of 120 feet per second. Its height S in feet after T seconds is approximated by the equation. S equals 120T minus 16 T squared. If the shell is designed to explode when it reaches its maximum height, how long after being fired and at what height will the fireworks appear in the sky? All right, well, first of all, let's take a look at this equation. I'm gonna rewrite it in descending powers, okay? So now it's in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. If I was gonna graph that parabola, it would open downward, and so it would look, in fact, let's do this. Let's not even, let's not even put uh, these lines here. Let's just, if we were gonna graph it, it would look something like that, right? Because it's gonna open downward. All right, now, this axis is T or time. This axis is S or height above the ground. It said, How long after being fired? So that's the time. And at what height? That's the height. Will the fireworks appear in the sky? So basically, we're looking for the time and the distance of the vertex. Because the vertex would be the highest point. 
So A is negative 16, B is 120, X equals negative B over 2A, which would be negative 120 over 2 times negative 16, which is negative 120 over negative 32. And if we take, let's see, 120 divided by 32, negative divided by negative is positive, we get 3.75. Okay, so what is that? That's the time, okay, at which it reaches its maximum height. So the question that said, um, how long after being fired? So 3.5 seconds after being fired, it will reach its maximum height. What is that maximum height? Well, we've got to find the vertex. We know that the T value, and this says X, but it's the same thing as using T, um, is 3.5 seconds. So we're going to take that and put it in here. So the height is going to be negative 16 times 3.75 squared plus 120 times 3.75. And it's calculator time. Negative 16 times 3.75 squared plus 120 times 3.75, and I get 225 feet. So the vertex is at 3.75 comma 225. 3.75 seconds, it's at a height of 225 feet. All right, with that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at one other question here and then we'll go on and see what we can do in chapter 11. Uh, let's see. Suppose you are a police patrol officer and you have a 300 foot long roll of yellow do not cross barricade tape to seal off an automobile accident as shown in the illustration. Basically, you're going to form a rectangular box around this accident scene. We have a total of 300 feet of tape. Okay. We want to create a rectangle whose dimensions, length and width, will produce the maximum area. All right. Now, since all the way around it is 300 feet, halfway around it, so just two sides would be 150 feet, okay? So this side plus this side equals 150. So let's call this side X. This would be 150 minus X. Are we okay with where I got those two dimensions? Any questions there? All right, so our area is going to be 150 minus X times X. Our area is going to be 150X minus X squared or negative X squared plus 150X. So there's the function or equation that's gonna give us the maximum area, okay? If we graph that thing, it would be a parabola opening downward. This is the X axis. This is the A of X or the area axis. So the vertex, would give this width or length, whichever, and the maximum area produced. And we're supposed to find the dimensions. Let's see, what does it say? Uh, what are the dimensions and what is the maximum area? Okay, so again, I'm finding the vertex. A is negative one, B is 150, X equals negative B over two A, is negative 150 over two times negative one, which is 75, okay? So this is 75, this is 75. 150 minus 75 would also be 75. So our dimensions are gonna be 75 feet by 75 feet. Now, to find the maximum area, you would find A of 75. In other words, you're going to find the y value of the vertex. You could also just take 75 times 75. In this case, since we know length times width is area, and we get 5,625 square feet. 
So here's your dimensions, here's your maximum area. And with that, I'm gonna jump over to chapter 11 and just review some things there. Uh, let's see here. So this is 11.3. And I want to review a formula that we had. A equals P times one plus R over K to the KT power, where P is the principal or the original investment. R is the annual interest rate. T is the time in years. K is the frequency that the, the interest is compounded. So if it's once a year, K is one. Semi-annually, twice a year, K is two. Quarterly, K is four. Monthly, K is 12, et cetera, et cetera. Mm, let's see here. Here's one, it says, an initial deposit of $10,000, so P is $10,000, earns 8% interest, so R is 8% or 0 0.08, compounded monthly, so K is 12, how much will be in the account after 10 years? So T is 10 years. And the question is, how much will be in the account? So what is A? So A equals $10,000 times one plus, 0 0.08 over 12, all raised to the 12 times 10 power. All right. Now, if you take 0 0.08 divided by 12, you get a repeating decimal. So you'd be you'd have to round off, and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave the inside the parentheses as it is. However, I can take 12 times 10 and make my outside exponent at 120. So now on my calculator, I'm gonna put in 10,000 times, so parentheses, one plus 0 0.08 divided by 12, close up the parentheses, raise to the, so the little caret, 120th power, and I get, 22196.40235. Now, since this is money, we're, unless it tells us otherwise, we'll round off to the nearest cent, which would be there. The two would round down. So our final answer is going to be $22,196.40. Any question about that? All right. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some equations. Let's take a look at this equation. A equals 500 times two thirds to the t power. So this is an exponential equation. The base is two thirds. Recall the base can't be negative. Okay. The base can't be one because when it is, then it doesn't fit the pattern of an exponential equation. If the base is larger than one, you're going to get an increasing function. If the base is between zero and one, you're gonna get a decreasing function. So for this equation, at the beginning, when t is zero, two thirds to the zero power is one times 500 is 500. So the starting value would be 500. Since the base is between zero and one, that's going to be decreasing, okay? So our graph is going to be at uh, what, uh, 0, 500, and then it's going to go down from there, all right? Um, let's say I had this equation, A equals 125, 1.75 to the T power. Now your initial amount would be 125, because your base is larger than one. So this thing would start at, at 0, 125, and then it would be increasing since the base is larger than one. And for the sake of time, that's all I want to say about that. I want to talk about changing 
back and forth between exponential and logarithmic equations. Let's say you have the exponential equation, two cubed equals eight. If you were to rewrite that as a logarithmic equation, it would be log base two of eight equals three. If you had seven squared equals 49, that would be log base seven of 49 equals two. Going the other direction, if you had an equation log base a of x equals 14, writing that in exponential form, a to the 14th power equals x. If you had log base 12 of four equals w, you would get 12 to the w power equals four. Recall log base 10 is written log, log base e is written ln. There's also a change of base formula. So let's say you had, um, well, you had this. You had log base two of eight. And you can't just put that directly into your calculator. You could rewrite that as log base 10 of eight over log base 10 of two and put that into your calculator. Okay, uh, let's see here. That, that. Hmm. Let's do this one. Let's talk about bed bugs again. If not checked, the population of a colony of bed bugs will grow exponentially at a rate of 65% per week. If a colony currently has 50 bed bugs, how many will there be in six weeks? Well, now we had this formula early on today. And that's when you're compounding something yearly, monthly, weekly, whatever. But if you've got something that's growing continuously, that's when we use this formula. So if we're talking about a population that's growing or dying off, we use this formula. Or if we're talking about money that's being compounded, the interest being compounded continuously, we use this formula. So back to the bed bugs. It says uh, it, the colony is growing exponentially at a rate of 65% per week. If the colony currently has 50 bed bugs, how many will there be in 50 weeks? So P is 50. The growth rate is 65% per week, which is 0 0.65. And the time is six weeks. So A equals 50 times E to the 0.65 times six. Okay. And let's see, 50 times E to the 0.65 times six. And I've got to put parentheses around my whole X point there. And I get about 2,470.1. Point one two two rounding to the nearest bed bug, <laughs> 2,470. Okay, let's say we were using a problem involving compound interest where it was compounded continuously. A equals P E to the RT. An initial investment of $2,000 uh, earns 8% interest. Compounded continuously, what will the investment be worth in 15 years? So A equals $2,000 times E, to the 0 0.08 times 15. 2,000, second E to the X, 0 0.08 times 15, and we get $6,640.23, and then there's a three there, so a 23 cents. Okay, I already talked about the change of base formula, which was an 11.6. We've got five minutes left here. Um, what I wanna look at is the radioactive decay 
for the half-life formula. A equals A sub zero times two to the negative T over H power. T is time, A sub zero is the beginning amount, A is the ending amount, H is the half-life. So let's say we've got the following. It says in two years, 20% of a radioactive element decays. Find its half-life. So the time is two years. We're supposed to find the half-life. We don't know the beginning amount, but it says in two years, 20% decays. So the final amount would be 80% of the original amount because 20% goes away. So A sub zero is just gonna be A sub zero. A is gonna be 80% of that. And we're gonna find H. So our equation becomes that. We'll divide both sides by A sub zero and our equation becomes that. We'll rewrite this as a logarithmic equation. Okay, H is on the bottom and I need H on top. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by H, which is gonna give me H log base two of 0.8 equals negative two. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by the log base two of 0.8. So now I've got H equals negative two over the log base two of 0.8. But using the change of base formula, I get negative two over the log of 0.8 over the log of two, and I'm gonna parenthesize all of that. I know I'm traveling at the speed of light here, and we get negative two divided by parentheses, log 0.8 divided by the log of two. And I get approximately 6.2 years. Okay. So I'll be back today at 115 if you have any other questions. Otherwise, have a great rest of your life. Have a great Christmas break when it comes. And good luck on the final exam. And as I said, I will uh, email each of you after I've calculated your grade on the final, or not on the, well, just the whole class. Um, don't expect them to, to be there uh, at 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning because, as I say, I may be on jury duty, so it may be Tuesday evening before I even get to start working on them. So uh, don't panic if you don't hear from me, you know, until Wednesday or maybe even Thursday. I should have them done by then, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, there you go. Thank you very much. And let's, we'll stop the recording here. And.